going on on May 1st, but then I was like, oh, no. People have finals. They're trying to get ready for a last-minute grading. Students still want to try to. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Get over the what day. Day. <laughs> I had a student last semester. He, he emailed me. He was like, if you have a heart at all, you would just consider. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> uh, yeah. That's not going to happen. Then they say, you don't care. Right. Uh -huh, I've heard you that. Care. You, you don't, don't care. Students you don't care. Concerned. Go study. <laughs> Well, you obviously didn't care either. <laughs> <laughs> so, the last minute requests, I'm sure, are coming for you too. Yeah. Yeah. Out 
and it's going to be in a zip drive, and you can save it onto your computer. Archive is where it's going to do the same thing as an export, but it's also going to include your grade center, so that if you have a student to come and dispute something, you can always have a record of, okay, well, according to what was submitted, you have all of that there for you, okay? So, I'm going to go over exporting and importing courses, okay? And the other thing is, I sent out an email yesterday about exam questions. If you're using Blackboard and you put your tests within Blackboard, with your final coming up, there's probably some questions that you previously used and you want to use them again. You don't want to go and create anything new. So we'll go over building a pool and doing random blocks for your exams, okay? Okay, when, once you're in your course, you will go down to your control panel under course tools. I'm sorry, not course tools. Where am I supposed to go if I want to export a course? Okay. All right, so here I'm going to go to export and archive course. Now here, export the package. And here within this course, these are my content areas where the meat of the course is. So I'll check that. If you have any blogs that you want, you would check that, your discussion board, the grade center columns and settings. I'll click settings. And we cannot forget test surveys and pools. And once you've done that, then you click submit. And up at the top here is going to show a success, a green bar across. That once that has finished, you would receive an email informing you that the uh, process has been completed. So let's say that we have received the email, we go back into the course, and this is the export file. It is a zip file. So don't think that you can just download it and say, oh, let me see if I can just open this up on my computer. If you do that, it's going to be nothing but gibberish. That zip file has to be open within a course in Blackboard. So here I'm going to down, click open, and it's going to download for me. Okay? So once that's downloaded, and I'm going to go to my course that I'm going to have for next semester. Where do I need to go to import? Okay, we're going to pretend that this is the new course. Not everybody at once. What do I need to do now? Where was that? Thank you. <laughs> Packages and utilities. Now this time, what am I going to click on, Dr. Blevins? Uh-oh, I looked off. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want to import. Professor Reese, can you help him out? Go to import and then just select the zip file. Okay, I'm going to import course. Did I click on the right thing? You said import. Oh, okay. Import package. And here, I'm going to click on import package. I will browse my computer. And so I saved it in my downloads. Here it is. Click open. It's been attached. Then I'll go down and I will check everything I did before. Is that it? And click submit now. I'm only here. In Something from one side of the room. Okay. Yes, sir. 
Let me start over. Go slow down. Slow down. Oh, I went too fast. Okay, where do I need to go back? Well, I know how to export it, but uh, the import process. Okay. All righty, I'm gonna click, click cancel. So it's exported. That's on your computer, right? Right. So here, I'm gonna go to my course. This is the course that's going to be taught next semester, and I'm gonna go down to import package. <laughs> click on import package. Content areas, the ones that I clicked before, I'm going to check those. So that's all of what I did. Okay? Is that it? Did I miss anything? Oh, this pops quiz. It's quiz. Oh, browse my computer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there, I have it, the export file attached. So once I have that attached and I have chosen the areas that I want to bring into the new semester course, then I'll click submit. And then up there at the top, that orange button is telling me that it's, it's processing. It'll say waiting, then it'll go to running, then it will say complete. Now, there have been instances where a professor doesn't do an export. They'll call and they'll say, I brought it in, but I don't know what's wrong. It's just saying it's running up there. A lot of times, majority of the times it's because they did a course copy. Course copy is a no-no. Can we say it together? Course copy is a no-no. Okay. Because sometimes if you're a professor that has done it before, you've had no problems, technology is now 100%. And there are instances when you do the course copy, you can have broken links. So if you did the course copy and it did successfully bring everything over, you have set up everything. You said, well, wait a minute, this isn't showing. Why is this not showing? I get an email. I get a phone call. Ms. Williams, I don't know what happened. I'm having this error. My students are calling me. It could be because of that broken link. So that is why course copy is a no. No. All right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, see, I steadily talk, and I did not mean to import this back into this course, but that's okay. Okay, so that is what you're going to do for doing an export. And the same thing is going to happen for archiving a course. With archiving a course, You want to check that you want to keep the grade center, and then you click submit, and it'll go through that process again and create that zip file for you, okay? All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about was tests. Now, let's say that you have a test out there. I think I have an example of one test out here, so. And there are questions from exam two that you want to include in your final exam. So let's say we're going to go to pools. Now under pools, you would have some exams. And here I've created. I want to say that I want to build a pool. We'll call it a final. You are aware of how to do the description and instructions, correct? Okay. I'll do submit. So here, 
I'll click on find questions. And these are going to be questions that I'm going to go look for from those other tests. Find questions. Okay. So over here on the left, you would have the list of tests that you've given. Okay. You can have, when it's scroll down, it's going to have the different types of questions. Then you would have the list of questions. I mean, the list of tests. Okay? So, I want to create a pool, and I want to go look for some questions that are multiple choice. So, I'm going to click multiple choice. And I'm going to click chapter one. And when I do that, it's going to list all of the questions that was in that test. And I would say I want to go and choose five questions. And so once I have chosen those five questions, I'll click submit. So here, I have my question, the total amount, and I have the total points. Now with the total points, I want to change that. So let's say I'm going to check right here, which will highlight all of the questions. And for the points, I'm going to change it to 20. I'll say update. And there, it's been changed. Okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. I went too fast on what? Changing the points? Yeah. Okay. I want to change the point value. Well, it's 100 now. Okay. So let's say I want to bring it down. Yeah, I know I do that. So my question is, so those five my other texts would have been valued at a total of 100 points and I would have given each question two points. Now that I've picked five of my questions, what is 20 points? How many points? That's 20 points out of what? That's what I was trying to say. Okay. okay. So on that check, for example, mm -hmm. I go to my text one and I had 50 items and it was two points each. Okay. And I knew how to give it a two point evaluation. Mm -hmm. But now I'm trying to do the final and this only represents five of my questions out of my 50 or whatever. Well, see, this is the final. I just chose five. Oh, so it's five. depending. It. Right. It's that's depending right. on how. I yes. Okay, yes. So you only have five questions on your final. For this example, y oh, yes. Because, okay. see, the rest is the pop, the pop quiz that's going for that final. Oh, I got it. Right now in, in here. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> yes. Okay. This also works if you not upload your test to the zip file because there are some groups that are coming to the test, but you have to literally type in each question. Yeah. So, will this work with those questions as well? If you have type questions in already, yeah. you can have this. <laughs> You can have this and then you can go through from the pool. This is just the pool. Let's say that you created a test, you typed in five questions. So then you want to go find questions. Okay. <laughs> and so then what you do, you look for this pool so you can bring it in. Okay. Okay. All right. So. But when you do those those questions, mm -hmm. I will, you would have those in there because I'm thinking now. Because if I go ahead and I launch this now, it'll just search, whoop, I'm sorry, it will just show these five questions. So make sure that you have the other ones added in. So like right now, from this, no, I'm no, no, I'm saying like for example, I have a point. Well, I have to literally type all of the questions. You have. Okay. Okay. But if I'm doing an AP class, mm -hmm. okay, that test needs to be different than if I'm doing a semester course. Right. And so that's so, what you 
would do here okay. is go to each one of those tests that you've given previously and pull those questions into this pool. Okay. All right. Any questions over there? I'm going to call y'all my quiet group. <laughs> yes. Okay. I use, even for my chapter tests or exams, like exam one, I use maybe three or four different tests right here. So I pull all those pools together to make that one test. Then from the final, I go back, I go back again, and I have from exam one, two, three, and four. I pull from each one of those pools. It seems like it would be easier to make your test like this now so that you won't be given the same question mm -hmm. because yeah, you can you now can pull it. from this right. entire bank instead of, you know, just like I do. Rebuild, do a new course, it's basically the same, and I don't like it. No, so, for know. example, like with exam one, it's on three chapters. Mm -hmm. So, I'll have 15 questions about cell structure, 10 questions, and I have now, from those 15, I have a bank of 50. So every time a student takes a test, no two students sitting by each other will get the same question. And so, what happens is, is for the section, yeah, when you randomize. So that way I'm pulling them every time. So no matter if they come, oh, I got locked out and they really get locked out, they're trying to cheat. When they take the second time, it's not going to have the same questions that they had the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I make my own test. Mm -hmm. I have to go to the little bit higher every question. Mm -hmm. um, if I could go and do those questions for my previous uh, chapter test for the final exam. Mm -hmm. Will the students be able to access the previous chapter exams? Not if you put a close thing on. If they not if you use lockdown. Well, no, no, not if you say it's only available for a certain time. time. Yeah. See, my tests are only available from Friday to Monday. So after Monday, it's closed. They can no longer see that test again, ever. So if the students go there, like I just graded a chapter exam. So mm -hmm. if they go, can they see after? If you didn't put a date on it, they can. No, I, I do put a date. They can't go back. No, they can't see what they go on. Yes, they got to get All right. The other thing in creating a test, you can do. Let me go back to that pool. A random block. So, I'm sorry, we're to the wrong thing. I need to go to a test. All right, so biology 239. Here, this is a test that has been worked on, but I want to go in and create a random block. What the random block does, I can go in. The random block, you will only be able to choose from a pool. And let's say I will go to the pool that I created, and I'm going to pull some questions. Because with a random block, let's say I, with the, the one that I just created final, I chose five questions, which I should have probably did more, a better example. But let's say I'm going to do those five questions for my random block, but I only want three of them to show. And those three will be what the test would be, okay? Well, along with the other questions that, that has been placed in here. If I'm confused and going too fast, slow me down. All right, so once we get into a test, go to reuse question, create random block. So with the random block, I'm going to go to this pool, and I'm going to specify I think these are just multiple choice, so that's what I'm going to choose. So here, mm -hmm, what I did was I just checked the box for those, those tests. And so I chose sample pool for midterm. And I chose chapter one, and I also chose multiple choice because that's the type of question that I want. All right, so I'm 
I'm going to click submit. I'm sorry. So here is the random block. There were 54 questions in those two tests. Now here I'm going to specify how many questions I want. I'm going to say 25. Submit. Now, also with the random blocks, I've chosen 25. This row here, I have five individuals. When they take the test, they're not going to get the same 25. Mm -hmm. It still be on the same subject matter, but they will all have different questions. So if you're in a classroom or a computer lab, everybody's going to get something different. Okay? So what's that randomized button? On the question, you know, the, the randomized the test number test. five is going to become number one. Okay, on the regular, on the way that I do it, I should say. So, if two people are taking a test, that means side by side. side, by side. side. At this point, it won't be different questions, it'll just be presented. Does it reorder the choices? If you can reorder the choices, like A, B, C, D. So they were yeah. on it, so they say number one was eight. Their number one is going to be different. Yeah. Their choices are going to be different. I'm saying, not saying right. She said, not like this. I'm right. saying, the way the that you do it. The way I do it is I have 50 questions, you know, and everyone is going to get that whole same 50 questions. Your number three is not going to be the same. Okay. That's what we do. Yeah, that's the way yeah. we do it. Okay. Now, the way it's there. I'm going to randomize the question. Well, this right here, they're going to get totally different questions. Totally different questions. Totally different questions. Yeah. The way we do it, they won't see the same question at the same, same time. time. Mm -hmm. But since we have to import the thing, we should have done it. Yeah, yeah. we could yeah. import the whole thing. Yeah. And that's cool. Go from there. Yes, ma'am. When you said that you have this random block, let's say you have three different chapters, and you said um, I want to take questions, or oh, you can't take questions from three different chapters. Right. Because see, when I went to create the random block, with the random block, you just choose what you want it to. Um, it's going to pull all the questions from those three exams you have. And here, you're going to choose um, how many of those questions. Now, let's say for your exam one, you have 30 questions and you want 10. So you would have created a pool for exam one. You will have a pool for exam two and for exam three. Mm -hmm. So when you come to the random block and you tell it to pull just a certain number, and here you can also preview the questions. I do have a question. Um, what about the level of difficulty um, and the fairness for the students? Because if you give, um, if you have a test and you have some students give different questions. They may have easier questions than other students. I mean, is that also fair to the random well, yeah. well, I mean, after the test, also when the choices, okay. when you ask, it asks you what kind of questions. So if, you, if you've already told it, your questions are like moves that sound in their different levels, it'll only pull them. But if you have a certain number, if you have twenty percent of your test to be one difficulty and another thirty percent and another difficulty, and you pull it in, when the randomization process is going to randomly give so, so many, I would think, at every because that's what randomization does until you have representatives. So you're going to have all of the levels of difficulty of your test theoretically represented, and I think that'll put some of your concern. <laughs> if you're online, please mute your microphone. All right. Um, there was a question that was asked outside. This is 
Mm, not too much of a last minute, but um, I want to show an example here within this test. Let's say you want to have a picture for your test. And you are able to include, I know biology have different images that they want to share with their students in a test, uh, even music, because I've helped uh, Mr. Jackson with one of his music tests in putting symbols, not symbols, but images of notes. And you are able to do that. Now here, this is with this <coughs> example, there is an image within. And when you are creating your test, let me go back and create. Okay, let's say you go and you start creating your test. Over here to your right, you will see question settings. And on here, you want to make sure on the number two that you have add images checked, whereby you can add it as a question or add it as an answer. Okay? I don't know if there are any pictures on this computer, but I'm going to go through the steps to show you. Okay, so here, you will see create a link to this media file, or you can choose a file, and this is for the answers. So I'll choose a file. Mm. Let's see. I'll see. Desert. Koala. Okay. Choose file jellyfish. <coughs> All right, so those are going to be the answers. And my question is going to be what? Okay. All right, so then I'm going to go and submit. My value. Oh, I didn't choose for this one. My house. Oh. Did I do that? Okay. I need your questions in the wrong spot. Where did I put my question? Yeah, the question. Oh. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Okay. All right, so I'm going to scroll all the way down. And then here is that question. I apologize. The pictures are very huge. And what I also did not do is choose which one will the the first one is what the answer is. So that is a way that you can include an uh, image within your uh, test. Okay? <coughs> All righty. How do you include the sound? Because I tried, I created the link, but my students said use it on another lockdown browser, that it's asking them to exit. Uh, 
But that would respond to slow. Yeah. And if it's a file, if it's a link and not mm -hmm. a file, because it would have to be like a picture of a JPEG, but if it's an extra mile YouTube link, it's not going to let it go. Remember, respond to prevent them from searching. No, it's an MP3 file. It's a file. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not a file. I'm going to have to ask Nick. That with using it with responders. Right, that's the thing. Okay. Remind me, Dr. Shaja. Okay. All righty. So, uh, Dr. Kelly, how would I go and export a course? It's your pop quiz. Told you. <laughs> um, do I need to come over here to the course menu? Yes, you do. Course menu or control panel? Control panel. Okay. And Dr. Sharjah, oh, I'm sorry, no, Dr. Cunningham, where do I need to go now? Um, packages and Okay. <coughs> Dr. Wafer, what's the next uh, statement in Wafer? Where do I need to go now? <laughs> no, no, we're not going to go until this pop quiz is finished. So, what's my next step? We're going to come to what? Dr. Thornton, what you said? Am I importing or exporting? I'm here, so who? I said export. Okay, so I'm going. Okay. I got to export it first. Okay. So then I need to go to archive course right now, right? No, 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 okay. So now, Dr. Regina Wafer said I need to select everything. No, no, not if you are not if you export. Oh, so what do I need to select then? Everything you want, but don't be afraid to Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. So I'm gonna do content areas. Blog, blog, if you want that. Okay, and I did discuss discussion. Grade center. Grade center. No, not the. And then I can submit now, right? No, I got settings. No, for exporting, you don't want the grade center, do you? I got settings. No, okay. I can click submit now. No. Why? Oh, the test. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. So that's how I export. Okay. Now, if I want to create a random block, what do I need to do? I'm coming over to my client side. If I want to do a random block, where do I need to go? Professor Reese? Create a new test. Oh, Dr. Blake. Create a new test. Create a new test, okay. And I create a new test by clicking on content. One of your links, yeah. Yes. Okay, so what you say, Dr. Shaja? I can't make. I'm sorry. I said, go to the panel. Okay. And I want to create a test. So where do I need to go next? I don't see tests. Oh. Evaluation? Click in one area where you put it. Contest. Test, test surveys and tools. All right. All right. So let's say I have a test that's already out there, Dr. Blevins, and I want to do a random block. So I'm going to go to exam one. 
I'm gonna do edit. And so what do I need? Okay, I heard somebody say I went too quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, in order to do the random block. Okay. What I did was I clicked on a test that was already created. But we're we're pretending like I'm creating this one. Okay. Now what you say, Dr. Blavins? You're gonna I mean, use those twenty those those questions. Reuse questions. Reuse the questions in there. Is that how many questions you want? And I go to create random block. Okay. And what's my next step? Okay, so I'm gonna select from my pools. I'm gonna say final and I'm gonna say this. And I also want the type of yeah, since there are multiple choice questions, I know some of you will do different kinds, but you know, you choose the kind of uh, you choose the type that you've created. So then I come and click submit, and I'll scroll down here to the bottom. Okay, uh, Dr. Okay. Elliot, yes, what's the next thing? I have 19 questions, I don't want 19 questions. So then I'll need to say how many I want, right? I'll say I just want 10. Okay, and that's it. And over here, you see the points per question. So depending on how many questions you have all together that includes the random block, you will change that number accordingly. Okay? Anybody confused, lost? Everybody okay? I got I got a question. Yes, sir. We can be able to retrieve that information. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We're trying to record today, so hopefully the system of the take back there and break quarantine. We're gonna make sure that all right. Nobody stop and slow down. I have one more thing. Yes, sir. The problem I've had with, with images, if I, you know, we have devices that <coughs> students are analyzing, and I take a picture from a book. Sometimes when I stick them into the question, they're too large. And I've had, you know, the departmental exam is 40 questions, and it may take me hours to okay, resize me... the, the images. Let's so say, that, that's been an issue with me. So you need to be careful with your images, is what I'm trying to. And um, when you do that, you can um, also go in. Well, no. Yeah, you do have to. I, I was thinking of showing you how to, but with it already being included, it's going to be a problem. The image could be too big. And right. You got to make sure you, re, you preview it before you, you just hit submit. Make sure the image shows the right. Because it would take up the whole screen. I have an image that's yes. the whole screen. Now, as y'all saw, those those pictures were way too big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with this being the last faculty tech Friday for the semester, um, I wanted to share with you what to look forward with uh, coming in the fall. So bear with me a second. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I can't get it right. I threw it It's not going right. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh oh.
All right, so just a review of some of the apps that we demoed this semester. One was the Brain AR app, and again, it's on the side screen. And this was one that allows you to take away certain, you take the skin away, we only have the respiratory, circulatory, the skeleton, the brain, and then you can separate and turn um, in this particular app. And it also provides you with definitions. So that's one that we've looked at. We've also looked at I annotate. <laughs> and I don't think I have I annotate uh, downloaded, but I annotate allows you to annotate PDF files. So if you have PDF documents, it's not, and it, let me put this out again. All apps aren't free, but sometimes paying is okay because it's a really useful app. So consider it sometimes, most of the time they won't be over $10, but if it's something that you can use long term for your students, and once you download it, remember, once you download it with your Apple ID, you have it on any Apple device. So it's not just going to be on your iPad, any Mac computer, any iPhone, you have that app in your catalog forever. Um, also, um, Christina was mentioning about Blackboard. Don't forget about the Blackboard apps that she showed you about early in the semester. Remember, we have Blackboard Learn, and this allows you, and I'm not logged in on here, but it allows you to, sometimes with the iPads, you try to do Blackboard through the web, it's a little off, but if you use the app, it actually organizes it a little bit better, and the screen doesn't go away. There's also Blackboard Grader, which I absolutely love this better than Great and Grader Blackboard. But what this does is, this allows me, I don't know why. Okay, so what this does is this allows you to, I don't have to log in here, but it automatically brings you to what your students are missing in terms of what needs to be graded. It doesn't grade discussion board. So if you're trying to grade discussion board, you're going to have to still go into the blackboard. It'll grade activities. It won't grade the discussion board. I'm not going to log in right now, but so that the Blackboard Grader is I think Christina that was like two. Was that one free? This one's free. This one's free. It's Blackboard Learn that isn't free. Yeah. I don't know when I got it. It was you know they were doing it free at one time and then they went up and they added a price to it, but it was like two dollars I think. Yeah, it wasn't that much. Also, another one that we did was Anatomy 4D. And this one, I think it is probably reading the QRS codes on this paper that I have. And what it'll do, it'll take away certain structures. So now they can actually see the blood flow. And like I tell my students, blood is not red and blue when it's oxygenated, when it's deoxygenated. Mm -hmm. But it lets them see the difference between those two and how one comes in the heart and one goes out, out the heart to the rest of the body. So this is just one of the apps that we use. Also, we looked at Leaf Snap. And that was just a catalog that a university created of all the leaves that they use um, in their area. I think it was here, I think it was New York, because I think she's considering using it for her botany class next semester. Where they you take a picture of the leaf and it automatically recognizes where um, where it's from, the species and everything. Photon is an app that you can use because if you notice the iPad does not work well with Flash. Yeah. So Photon is an app that you can download and then you can go enter that website and it'll allow Flash to actually work on the iPad. At the time I did it, it was five dollars. So when Christina went back to do it, it was like twelve, I think. Yeah, it increased. So again, sometimes they have app sales, so you just have to catch it on the right day. Um, Bayboard is a collaboration tool. Let's see if 
because I can get this one up. And this one is something that it doesn't have any sound, but it can, um, you can interact. And what you see here, I was actually doing this with my brother. I made him get on, he was at home. So I made him get on his Mac to see if he saw what I saw. So that's how the, what do you think? Go, 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 do you see when the just to make sure before I come to you with this stuff, I make it right out. But mm -hmm. this one, there's no sound, but you can put in pictures and you can type and then the person can respond back to you. And it's actual a live communication, but there's no voice. So again, if you're even if maybe if you're doing a conference call using Zoom or Skype, and you can use this and while you're still talking to your students. So that's just another option. Top hat, that's the student response system. We've used that one before in here where it puts up the attendance code, remember, and then it goes away. Now the thing with Top Hat is, it's free if you have less than 30 students in your class. That's what we figured out. If it's more than 30 students, then it's a fee. So we're always about trying to not add additional cost to the students. So it's, it's one of my favorites. Um, just because I'll just show you what it does. And with Top Hat and most of the student response systems, the students can respond using their cell phones, their laptops, their iPads, and in this case, this is the attendance code. So what you would do if you chose Top Hat, you can put this up the first five minutes of class or first two minutes, whatever you decide. They respond back with the attendance code, and then you take it down. So when I say finish attendance, it goes back. What if I want to do attendance mid-class because people decide to get up and leave and they have things they have to do? <laughs> How when you have scheduled this class? I don't really understand that. The code changed. So that's another way to know that they leave. Also, if they try to send it to their friend, by the time their friend gets it, you can change the code so they still can't get in. Oh, we can't get in. Oh, the code changed. So this is another way that you can get attendance and force them to actually be in the class. So that's top hat. Remember, I can say free, less than 30 students. With this, you can ask questions. They respond automatically, you know, with their iPhones and is it free with them? Yes. Is it more than like if I have to pay for a 70 student class? No, they free for them, they have to pay as well for because of the size of the room. And that's because it's based on room size. Yeah. Um, now these are my top three from the semester. Explain everything is my absolute favorite. And explain everything is a digital whiteboard where you don't have a whiteboard in your class. And I actually went to um, one of the music classes, because they had to leave the music building and move their classes to Stuart Hall. He didn't have a chalkboard or a blackboard. He didn't have an all white board. He had a TV, but he still needed to teach music class. So he uses Explain Everything to put up the information and communicate with his students in class. So, for example, let's just do a new one. You pick our template. You can. Add a picture. So now this picture is here. So while I'm talking to my students, I can start to, and if you notice at the bottom, you see the little red dot, let's first record. So I'm in class right now talking to you, and I decide I need to explain this picture because we want to look at blood flow. We want to look at structure. What does this mean? And stop it. I don't know if we can hear it. Just with the iPad, it's weird, but you can usually hear it. You can hear it. And in addition, you can also send this. So if you're in class teaching a lesson, recording would explain everything. Then you send it to your students. They can watch it, post to the blackboard. And some people are like, well, this ain't not gonna come to class. What about that student that's in class? That goes off, because you know how we are sometimes, we'll drift away and come back, and they missed it. 
this allows them to make sure that they get it. So I understand that there are always concerns about, well, I don't want students skipping class, but you have to think about those students that are in class. Some of them, they're trying to take notes, they write really fast, but they miss something. This allows them to make sure that they're getting it. With this, they can go back and watch it 10, 20, 30 times, slow it down, speed it up, whatever they need to do, because at the end, it's to help the student. So explain everything is one of my favorites. Um, Socratic. Yes, it does, just with the iPad and the way it's and sometimes it doesn't come back when we turn, I think if I turn it, hold on. How like how long? Yeah, I mean, can you wait for one hour and upload it? On the time on the bottom, it has hours, so I'm not sure what the limit is, but it does have hours on here. And if I guess you may have to take breaks if that's a concern to stop maybe in 30 minutes and then just start another one, so to make sure that you get it all if you're worried about it cutting off after an hour. But I'll check into that to see how long you can actually record for and then post it. I have seen it edited once it's, you actually make it a video. People have, in one of the demos that I saw, she went in and cut it. Because the students, and this was a K-12 teacher, she had her students make their own Explain Everything videos for an assignment, and they cut it and put in other videos and added this and something else so they were able to manipulate it now that it's a video file. Because once you save it as a video file, then you can pretty much do whatever you need to do with it. And that was, I'm glad you asked that question, another way they had the students in the class, if it's a complex topic or we're doing it for labs and you need them to explain everything, put them in small groups, they record on their phones or whatever they have, and then they present back to you. So not only can you use it, but your students can use it too. Yes, sir. Can we get on the iTunes U from a PC? From a Mac, you can. Right. So but from a PC, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But everything that's in iTunes U, it is not in Blackboard. I'll update it and it'll all be there. So that way you can still get that same content. Um, Socrative is the other one that we've used a couple times, and it's a student response system as well. And again, it allows you to get that teacher-student interaction, and that student in the back that doesn't respond, they can actually respond, participate, and you can record the actual um, responses from the students. The last one, and this was Kapoop, the one in the middle, this was the one that we did I think the last time we were here, and this one is not an app, it's on the web, but we'll play again today just to show you. Okay, well, maybe we won't play because I can't remember my password. Mm -hmm. This is so bad. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'll try to look it up while we're doing something else because I don't think about it. But what Kahoot is, it's a game based interaction 
So basically with that, it was like we were playing who wants to be a millionaire or something like that. And the students are able to see if they're in first place, second place, third place, there's music playing and you can keep going. And it was actually a great activity because the <coughs> faculty were overjoyed with the hoop. So I would recommend if you're looking for something to just for a brief minute to get them engaged, to consider using that as an option. We also talked about the whole purpose for us doing Tech Fridays. Um, one of our main goals is to is for student engagement. We want to make sure that our students are engaged in the learning process. We don't want a grandstand teacher in the front talking full time and the students that bring grade. We have to always remember that our students have different learning styles. So we have to make sure that we are meeting the needs of their learning styles, visual learners, tactile learners, read write learners, auditory learners. Um, also engaging them in the classroom. And this list is so not even a comprehensive detailed list. I will post a list to both Blackboard and iTunes U and websites for active learning strategies. If you're looking for ways to create um, activities for the students, Jigsaw, and that's just where you put things in order. One minute paper, this can be used for multiple purposes. The one minute paper can be about a concept that you explained and you're just trying to see if they got it. So at the beginning of class, from previous, let's see if you remembered anything. If you need that live text assignment, which we all do, you have to have that live text, give them the post in live text. So not only have you checked to see if they've done their, they understand the concept, but you also have done your last assignment. So that's just another way to use it. Or post it in Blackboard. Fishbowl, this is where you have students write down anonymous questions. Drop, it don't have to be a bowl. It could be a box. It could be on the table. But the purpose, again, is to get that student that's not going to ask the question to get their questions answered. Think, pair, share, that's a common one. You may not call it that, but you have them think about something. They pair up or put them in a group and then a group report back. So again, this list is very long. These are just a few that we're sharing um, today. All right, in the semester. Today, like I said, is our last text Friday for spring. You will receive a survey from me via email within the next two weeks. Please, please, please complete the survey. This, again, we need the data to show why we're giving you our pets. Why is that, um, Dr. Elliott, why does he need that Apple TV in his class? Without this feedback, we can't justify to Dr. Thomas that Marcus needs 200 more Apple TV, which he would love. <laughs> so we're, please, please complete that survey. Also, interviews. We're going to ask today if a couple of you can just hang around for a few minutes just to talk about how you use the technology in your class the past academic year. It didn't have to be this semester. Maybe it was last semester. Maybe it was previously. But we just need documentation for why we're pushing for more and why we need more of this. Um, also, we are in collaboration with the Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence. There will be a summer institute for faculty. Um, the focus of this is the title day. The requirements are complete application, a letter of recommendation for your department chair and dean, um, current syllabus, and we're targeting our, it will, first preference will go to general education teachers. Those are those instructors that teach freshman students. So those intro 101 courses, that's where we're starting. That doesn't mean we won't accept others, but those, that's our target group for this first time. Um, at least three assignments with the rubric from the course, three assessments from the course, and a statement of purpose. Why do you want to participate? How do you think this will? And there's more details. I just cut this part. So you'll get an email next week with all the details about what's involved for this. A teaching philosophy, your commitment. It's a six-week hybrid training. Hybrid means that we'll be some face-to-face. -face. We understand this summer. So there'll be some face-to-face, -face, but there'll also be some virtual sessions throughout the summer. So we're not going to require you to come up here every day like summer school. 
introductory week, and these are tentative okay. dates, June 8th through 12th, midsummer check-ins, June 25th, and then in the summer presentation that wrap up July 20th through 22nd. And then part of your commitment is that you will implement the um, strategies and the development that happens during the summer in your fall and spring. Yeah, okay. yeah. We will monitor you to measure the deliverables yeah, to make sure okay. that you're doing what you said. And if you know Dr. Thomas, if you're not, you don't want to do it because it's So please make sure that if you participate, that you comply. The benefits, you get $1,500 mm -hmm. but I put a okay. note. Please note first state regulations. Although it is a stipend, you are required to have deductions taken out. So your retirement and other taxes do come out. It's not just a flat $1,500. How much time in the first week? Yeah. Um, it's going to vary on those that are participating in summer school. And so that is flexible. Because we know that it's summer and people have summer school and other things going on. So once we get to the final 10, then we'll figure that out. It'll be flexible because we know that, you know, we have a lot going on. Um, revised course with technology integration and then a peer mentor for the next cohort. Part of this, this will serve as a precursor for iBook development, which we are pushing for for fall 2016. So we would like our Gen Ed courses and others to start to create our own books. We have the capacity, we have the content knowledge, we have the years of experience where we can do that and also help our students. So this is just one part of um, the summer faculty training. So we, in addition to this, there's also a professional work, workshop series that's coming out from CTLE as well. So all that, be looking for next week, and I know y'all don't like general messages. So I'll try to send it out via this group, and then I'll ask you to forward it to others in your area, just because I know the general messages, we just kind of delete them. Um, any questions? Yeah, we're doing 10 faculty, just to start off with. And this, this is just one, the first one, but we'll continue to grow it. Um, so if it's something, there'll be more information, like I say, next week we have a, I have a whole long page description about everything that's going on and um, what the requirements are, how long, application, and then there also, there's also application from CTLE. So if it's something you want to consider, think about, feel free. Um, and it also helps you. You've always wanted to get that course redesigned. You've helped help now. You don't have to do it by yourself. Any questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions? <laughs> For summer, we're going to do once a month. And right now, we're, I'm looking at June 19th and July 24th as the two dates, but it will be be able to connect virtually, so you don't have to worry about, well, I'm not teaching this song, I'm not coming up here this song. You can connect from your house, just mute your microphone. Um, fall, we will have drop-in sessions during convocation week. We are working with, just so for faculty, and I think this will help you, we are working with the welcome week um, in CTLE and admissions. When the students come up here for welcome week, we are working with them to do some type of drop-in session so that students know how to check their email, they know how to get on Blackboard, and they know how to get on LabTex. So we're, we are, because they do it in orientation when they come during the summer, but by the time the fall comes, you already know they forgot. And they're not going to ask until, oh wait, my teacher said I need LabTex, I don't know how. So we are working with them to do some sessions with the students so that when they come to you on day one, they should know where their email is, how to check it, how to get on Blackboard, and how to use LabTex. Um, also, we are thinking about, for faculty, drop-in sessions, convocation week, the last two days, that Thursday and Friday, again, because we know you're getting ready for classes, but just like um, Christina does the tips, so she can kind of, you need, wait, how do you tell me, how do I bring my course from last semester, what do I do? So we'll have those sessions throughout those two days so that you can come in and just get what you need and go back to your office. And then we'll start out twice a month, sometime August 21st, 28th. Um, yes. Next semester, we're going back to five day weeks. Mm -hmm. So, how are they going to set that up? We'll have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. 
we'll have to figure it out if we have to do what we do two in a week and then whoever can come at those times can come in. I know before there used to be like supposedly a day where there was no class and no time for meetings on Fridays. So we'll have to do a Friday afternoon to get the maximum participation to make it available for everyone. So we'll we'll figure it out. And we'll if and also with that, we'll send out a survey to you to ask you too what's the best time and day so that we um can capture everyone. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Anything? Don't forget your attendance in Blackboard. The code for today is 1418, and I did a classic forget. The quiz was there, but Dr. Blake was like, I don't get the quiz. I'm like, but I put it. But it was hidden, so you couldn't take it. Yes, so it's there now. So please feel free, go in. If you missed any weeks and you weren't here, but you were here, or you weren't here physically, you were there virtually, please go in and do the attendance. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Yeah, I'll have to um, need to double check to make sure that I added you, but I think I did, but I'll double check. And again, to those of you that have not received your iPads, we are ordering them if you've been coming. And again, the key to getting an iPad, please tell this to your fellow colleagues in your department. If you don't come, you don't get an iPad. Just because you're in a department and everybody else has one, you're not obligated to receive one. So please pass that along. It's not a free iPad. If you're not coming to the sessions, you don't get a device. So with that, I think that's it that I have today. If anybody needs help setting up anything, um, I've, iPads, iTunes, you download any app, feel free. We're here. So that's all I have. Don't forget to do your ticket. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And also, if you don't mind, if you haven't used your technology in your class, please wait around a few minutes. If you haven't sent me, I know Dr. Elliott sent me a write-up about what he did in his class in the video. So if you haven't, or if I haven't come to your class and videos you using the technology, please stay around a few minutes just so we can get a video to interview you about what, we're, what you've done in your class. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>